Queensland Parks and Wildlife is responsible for taking in sick, orphaned and injured cassowaries. Well at the moment we actually have uh, six orphans here which we get at various stages in their development and we will actually keep some of them for up to 18 months and they will be assessed and once they're assessed as um, healthy and suitable to be released, they will be released back into the wild. They're coming into areas they haven't been before and it's in search for food. So that's when the risks start to increase in post-cyclone times is because it's a low food period and birds will wander to try and search for that food. So they will often wander further than what they normally would in good times. I mean, we don't know, maybe they do know that they're coming, but um, I suppose a lot of them do just hunker down. They will rest up against a tree and, and hide in um, gullies, like little creeks, just to protect themselves. But they are pretty tough creatures. And because a lot of the community people around here, they know they're individual birds. So straight after the cyclone, you know, everyone was communicating and talking about, you know, my bird has come back into the area. So a lot of the birds um, did eventually start showing up and traversing their regular paths. Whether it will ever recover to what it was originally is very a little bit uncertain because there are so many exotic vines and, and other plant, other weeds, terrible weeds that are, are coming up and growing extremely well. I slept right through. I, I went to the spare room, went to sleep, and when I woke up in the morning I came out to this, you know, destroyed landscape. Yeah. It was sort of apricot coloured world because the paper barks are the, the trunks that pale apricot colour. And it was just so horrible. There, there still are cassowaries in Edmund Kennedy. There are cassowaries in the, <coughs> in the parks, but of course they, they move out from the parks and they cross roads and dogs, dogs chase them and kill them and uh, cars run over them. I think that there's been a huge loss to the environment, not through the cyclone, but really through the cleanups and opportunistic cleaning at that time as, as well. And I understand that to a certain extent because that's just what we like to do. We like to tidy our yards and whatever, but Mission Beach is a place where the, the natural environment is really integrated with, with a lot of the um, private properties. And so where do you stop tidying up, really? I think that's the big thing. And what we've got is, is development hard up, like a hard edge against the natural environment and it, that's changed a lot over the years. We have volunteers that have um, spent over 4,400 hours helping us chop up these feed stations and we have a lot of hard-working rangers that spend fill these feed stations every two to three days and in the last two months we've actually delivered about 142 tonnes of fruit. Uh, we also put um, remote cameras at our feed stations to capture data and to also use that in our management of the feed stations. But we have caught um, males picking up the fruit and dropping it on the ground and feeding it to the chicks. Well I've been very, very fortunate so I'm lucky I had those 40 years and in particular about the last, uh, I suppose, eight or nine years when I got to know one cassowary particularly well. You, you never, you, you, you always could cassowaries very carefully, you don't take liberties, you don't take liberties. But anyway, he was a very, he's a very amiable one and he took no notice of me and we, and he, then he had, he's had seven lots of chicks every year for seven years. He'd come by with his, with one, two or three or four chicks. They've been demonised to a certain extent in that people want to see the bad things that they can do. So often you'll see on YouTube heaps of stuff where uh, the cassowaries have been provoked into leaping up and kicking something because they say, oh, well, that's what they can do. And there's a lot of misinformation out there. But um, if you're sitting quietly, like for instance in here, then you'll see them and they see you and they just keep an eye on you. They just keep going about their business. They don't do anything. It's a it's it's a overwhelming experience and I don't think it doesn't matter how many times you see a cassowary you have to stop and just watch it in awe. It's been a disaster but we've learnt a lot of information and we're gathering a lot of information that we can utilise in the future to learn about the species, its movements um, post cyclone but also about their general biology. We're trying to get the most out of this experience and and we learnt from Larry and we're also going to learn from Yasi if this is to happen again. Well I do go down every now and then to the old house and, and bring some things up and I, I've seen him 
and the big females down there a couple of times, but not the way I used to. The natural environment seems to be put, you know, being pushed more into the background all the time has been important for tourism at Mission Beach, which I think is really sad because we have a unique um, destination here, the wet tropics, that's what it is. And so if we're going to attract visitors to the area, it's got to be focused on that. It can't be focused on just the same old, same old. If we do focus on that, then we can see more appropriate development happening here. And, and more of a focus on how we're going to protect just those really special things that bring people here in the first place.